Well, uh, you play a character who is the wife of Hector, the great mm -hmm. Trojan leader who's been killed, and now you have your son, who is the next generation that the Greeks are very, very terrified of. Um, so I can see that you're in a very difficult situation, and it's very analogous to, you know, what's going on in the world. Your part also is very analogous to a lot of situations that uh, people, women find themselves in, but it's a, a little bit, in, in a way, a more complicated situation, because you said, I would say that she's also, in a way, a victim. Right? Yeah. But she enjoyed a lot of perks along the way. Yeah, she did. Um, I, uh, I guess the, <laughs> it was very interesting playing this particular character in amongst, I mean, she's the only woman who seems to have, uh, seems to be benefiting in some way from what's gone on. I mean, this war is supposedly fought because of her, and all the women uh, blame her for the war, but um, but I sort of maintain, I mean, you know, you ha have to sympathize with your character in some way. You can't just play somebody's idea of a villain, right? So I always sort of maintain that Helen didn't fight the war. She didn't ask for the war to be fought for her. It's the men who do this um, because they want her. And I see her as um, a woman who's, who's figured out the way the world works and is determined to survive. Um, you know, and wh whatever the other women want to say about her, I mean, I guess she's figured out that too, and she's gonna find the way through that, that makes her, that allows her to survive and thrive. Um, it's the end thrive part. It's the end thrive part. To, uh, I do wear yeah. a lot of gold, uh, <laughs> and maybe there's a little too much Trojan gold. The Trojan Let's gold. Let's make it it's clear. Too, yeah. Maybe it's a little too much thriving for some people's taste, right. but well, but, in the face, but, yes. But, I, but I, but I see, but I see her as doing what she knows will work, and knows will. Keep her alive. Keep her alive. She's not, I mean, Hecuba says, why didn't you kill yourself? Why didn't you slit your throat, take fall on a sword? And, and I just say, well, uh, that's not who she is. She's not that woman who's going to drink fire. Or, and, but and she could have gone home. Well, you know, but the, I mean, there are. You know, Hecuba also says that. Martha Henry's playing Hecuba, and she does say, you could have left. Yeah. The door was open. Um, you but know. the gods are in the middle of this as well. Yeah. I mean, but in this play, the gods aren't listening. No, in this but play, they did, Euripides they're actually, used in your arguments, in your self-defense, and they come up again and again that, you know, the gods are um, are somewhere out there as shaping forces. And so I guess when I ask, how does free will and gods that don't show up or do show up and aren't listening play into the dynamic here? I think they're addressing their fate and they're trying to grapple with the fact that these things can happen and that you've offered your prayers and either they're not listening or they've chosen to go against you. I mean, Andromache says it's the evil minds of the gods are killing us. And she says evil. And, hmm. and so, and in this play, I think Euripides is actually questioning, you know, where are you? if you can allow this to go on. Well, we had our temples, our body, the bodies of our dead are lying before these temples. Um, and so I, I think it's a very, uh, uh, it's an extraordinary piece because he's actually, he's, he's questioning existence as well, their existence. Can you imagine that in front of a Greek audience to, to put out those kind of questions about mm -hmm. religion and about the, their own national heroes. Mm -hmm. We have a question, Shauna, which is quite insightful from our audience. Are you, you know, Shauna, you're a mother yourself, mm -hmm. and, and they're asking if you are actually, are you a mother yourself? And yes. if so, how did that help you form your character's ability to turn your son over to the Greeks, which, of course, Dramaki has to do. They want to kill this Trojan prince, and so they insist on taking that child. I don't think about it really until it happens on stage. Uh, I think, you know, I remember doing Medea before I had children and Medea after I had my son. And the only difference really was that I hmm. could, was more comfortable around children. <laughs> I 
wasn't afraid of them. Um, but I think as an actor, you, you are always imagining things. I, I don't put my son in the place of this boy who's playing my son. Right. Um, uh, we actually have two lovely boys, Ronan and Gregor, who switch off. Um, I think of this boy that I love and, and that he's being taken from me. Uh, it, it's the unimaginable thing. It's the thing as a parent you don't even want to think about. It's the thing about that rivets you when you hear that a parent has lost their child or that their child is missing. You you can't prepare for that, is what I think I'm saying. Right. As a human being or as an actor, you cannot prepare for that. You have to receive it and, and respond to the best of your ability. So many women that I've read about just say, well, they went insane for a moment or they, 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 their body found ways to cope because it's, it's something that I don't know how you cope with. 